Hey everybody, this is James and today we're going to take a look at how to make it so that you can have variable jump heights in your game. So you can do little jumps or big long jumps just like that. Pretty simple to do, so let's dive in to a project and get this going. Okay, so this is a question I've had come up a few times recently about how to make your player only jump a little bit when you when players just tap the jump button, uh, but if they hold the jump button down, it'll let your player jump for longer. So it's a pretty simple technique. I've got a empty, simple project here set up. I've got a little player uh, over here, which uh, we've got the player input. We're using the new input system on this, and we've got a basic grid. But it doesn't. You don't need to be in a new input system for this. It doesn't matter which type of input you're using. Uh, all that matters is you have a button that makes you jump, and that's about it. So I've got my player here right now. No matter what way I tap this guy, I'm gonna just I'll tap jump. He jumps up that high. If I hold jump, he jumps the exact same height. So what we're going to do is, as we said, we want to make it so that when you tap jump, you just do a little jump. But when you hold jump, it does a full length jump that you have going on here. And the way to approach this, or at least the best way that I found to approach this, is actually to think about this the opposite way around. So you're not making it so that the player jumps longer when you hold it down. What you're doing is make it so the player jumps shorter when you just do a quick tap. So basically, if you release your jump early, then it's going to make your jump end quicker. And it's a pretty simple thing to do. All we have to do is jump into our player controller script here. So right now I have just various stuff that's making my guy move and all that. The only important thing is right here where I'm pressing the jump action here. And that's going. Well, I'm checking if I pressed it this frame, so that's basically the same as get key down. When you press the key, I do a jump, and we're going to do the opposite of that. So at the bottom here, I'm going to add a new little thing in here to say if my jump action this time was released this frame, and if you're on the old input system, that's just when you do get key up. It's the same thing. So if I release the button that's making the jump happen. What I'm going to do is make it so when I release that button, if I hold it down, it's not going to have any effect, but when I release it, basically I want to say if I release it early, I'm going to say that the rigid body, that velocity, which is what I'm using to control my uh, speed of jumping, is equal to a new vector two. I'm not going to make any change to the sideways velocity. That's their velocity dot x because that's what I have make me shoot upwards into the sky up here. I got jump force applying on the y axis. But what I'm going to do is take whatever the y axis currently is, and I'm, sorry dot velocity dot y, and multiply that by 0.5. So that basically the current force that I have shooting me upwards, I'm going to reduce that by half. So let's save that. Let's go back in here. And then if we play it here, if I do a little tap like that, you see he does a short jump. If I hold it, he does a big long jump. So perfect. That's working nicely. But there is a little issue with this, which is if I do a big long jump and then let go when he's fallen, it actually slows his falling speed. It might have been a bit hard to see there. Let's see if I do it at the bottom. You see he kind of awkwardly slowed. And that's because it's having your y velocity uh, when you release the jump key so what we want to make sure is that we only apply this when we're moving upwards so if we're if we're jumping upwards then we're allowed to reduce our velocity when we let go of the jump button but if we uh, don't do that uh, if we're already falling down then we don't want to reduce our velocity in any way because there's no reason why that should make sense to happen. So I'm going to add a little and into this if statement check to just check if the rigid body dot velocity dot y is greater than zero. So basically, as long as we're moving upwards and we let go of the jump button, then we're going to reduce the amount of speed that we're moving upwards. And of course, you can adjust this value to 0.5. You could make a custom variable for it, of course. But I've actually found from my own testing that the 0.5 works pretty well. And I use this in my own game, Skookaboom, and the Tomb of Doom as well, this whole method. So if I go ahead and play here, you can, we should now see jumping all works perfectly fine. I can do jump heights, I can do really quick or medium. And if I fall down now, no matter when I let go, 
we don't get a reduction in speed. Just to verify this working a bit easier, I'm going to turn a little trail renderer that I have attached to this player on. I'm going to duplicate my player. And what I'm going to do is go back into my player controller script and we're going to add a little bool, or I have already added the bool into my script here, I'm just not using it yet. A public bool for prevent jump limiting. And I'm going to put this on here and say if prevent jump limiting is false, then we'll allow ourselves to do the jumps. And if it's true, then we'll stop this all happening. So on my second little player guy here, I'm going to turn this on. This is just this is just for to make something visible so we can see what's going on here. I'm going to go down to my trail render and change the color of this second one to be this kind of orangey color. It'll just take a moment. Boom, like so. And now if I play the game, did I turn it on on this player? Let's make sure. Yes, I did. Sometimes my brain immediately forgets something that I've just done. So now we got two trails on these guys. If I walk over to the side, you can see that the trail follows along. But if I jump, see one of them jumps higher because he's using the old way of not caring if I release early. But if I jump like that, no matter when I release the, the drop button, you see there's no change in the falling angle. So I was holding that there. But you can see you can get extra jumps in now with the extra guy. So it increases the amount of jumps you can have because of course you're ending them earlier and landing on the ground quicker. And this is an important thing to factor into your game's development, this kind of control over your game, because it does open up different possibilities for how your players can move around and things like that. For example, here, if I jump just right one over the top and one can't, and suddenly you're playing your game at different speeds and things like that. So it is an important factor to consider, but there we go. So hopefully that all makes sense and you can apply it to your own games. And like I said, it doesn't matter what kind of control input scheme you're using. All that matters is you have a jump, and what you want to do is end it a little bit early when the player lets go of the button that makes them jump. So thanks for watching this video, a quick little short one, but hopefully it will answer a few problems that I know people have been uh, asking me about lately. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness. And in the meantime, keep being awesome.